Okay, here we are trying to get through the answer key as quickly as possible. True and false problems to start off, warm-ups. If the second derivative is negative, then yes, it is in an interval that is concave down, so that is true. The derivative is zero only when there is a local max or min. Well, if you have a function that's like f of x equals x cubed, you can get a zero for your derivative, but that is neither a max nor a min, so that is false. When applying L'Hopital's rule, and we've got the limit of g of x over f of x, yes, it's a quotient, but we do not use the quotient rule. That is false. Oops. Be careful not to. Uh-oh, uh-oh. This is true. True, 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 true. Um, sketch the graph of the following function based on the inter information provided. All right, so the first thing to do, I would say, is look at these values. These are good starting points. When you're at negative 1, you're at 3. When you're at negative 2, 3, negative 4, you are at positive 1. And when you are at 3, you're up here at 5, right there. And uh, we then know that the function is decreasing, decreasing, going down from infinity to negative 4. So it's heading down all the way up to that barrier. And then also at 3 to infinity. So here it's going down and increasing from negative 4 all the way up to negative 3. Okay, so it's going down, up, and down again. The function is concave up over the interval to negative 1. That would make sense if it's concave up and it's going down. It looks like it's doing something like this. We don't really know. It could be flattening out. Uh, not sure. And then it's concave down. Uh, concave down from negative 1 to infinity. So again, it could it could be going and approaching an asymptote like this, um, but it's uh, decreasing thereafter. So we know that this is a high point. Oh, so it can't be flattening out. It's got to be going back down to be decreasing. All right. Uh, so that makes a lot of sense right there. When um, I get to this part, then it says, if the function is a polynomial, is it even, odd, or neither? Well, it's not symmetrical about the y-axis, so it's not even. Odd needs to go through the origin, because that's where our thumbtack goes when we rotate it. So this is a neither. What is, it says down here, what is um, f prime of negative 4? What is the derivative going to tell me the slope will be there? That's 0. And that is because uh, we know that, well, it's a polynomial, uh, so it's not like an absolute value type of thing. And uh, because it is a change in uh, decreasing to increasing. So it's going to be a local minimum there. If it's a polynomial, I might as well sketch these in. That is going up. That is going down. What is the second derivative of um, uh, the evaluated at negative 1? Well, that is an inflection point, so that is going to be 0. And that's an inflection point. It's a change from concave up to concave down. I'm just abbreviating and save time. And then estimate f prime of 0. Looks like it's spot on for 4. So I'm just going to say approximately 4. All right, look at the graph. All right, that was a bit tedious. Anyway, on to probably the dumbest problem that was ever written in the history of calculus. Because if you look at this, and I don't know where we got this problem from. I don't think I can take credit for it. But 60 RPMs, that's equal to 1 R. PS, one revolution per second, because if 60 of them are in a minute, one of them is in a second. Well, that's equal to 2 pi radians. 
as it's going around one revolution, two radians per second. Okay, so two pi radian per second. Um, sketch a picture of the scene. Well, if this is the wall right here, and here's the spotlight. Uh, draw my little spotlight there, radiating rays of light. Oh, can't quite see that. And uh, this is 30 meters here. And this uh, criminal, uh, sounds like orange is the new black. We got Piper running along here. That's 10 meters. She's got a head start. And so it's turned at this angle. And the question is that as she runs further away, call that X, what's happening to the angle of rotation like that? Well, if it's rotating once around in a second, do you think she has a chance of outrunning that thing? I don't think so, because she's only going 10 meters a second. So she's going to be here at like 10 meters when one second later it's gone all the way around to come back. So I don't know what the deal is there, but that's crazy. But let's pretend that the question was find the rate of uh, rotation. Find that angle of rotation. So we'll say what's the d theta dt? Find d theta dt. Okay. Well, you would set that up by saying that the tangent of theta is equal to the opposite. That's 10 plus x over 30. So then that means that theta is equal to tan to the minus 1 of 10 plus x over 30. So if we're trying to find d theta dt, that's going to be 1 over then 1 plus 10 plus x over 30 squared, then times the derivative of the inside, which if we separate these fractions, it's x over 30. So that's I'm going to change this very sneakily into 1 over 30, like that. And then um, that's it. Uh, so then um, we also have to tack on then the dx dt, because it is taking the derivative of x, not in terms of x, but in terms of a new variable t. Well, we know that dx dt is 10. So when I multiply 10 times this, it actually becomes 10 over 30. And this simplifies down to, that's 1 over 3. And I'm going to then take the 3 and put it in the denominator. So it's 1 over 3. I'm multiplying each by 3. 3 times this cancels with the 3 there. So it becomes 10 plus x over 30. OK, well, at this instant, at the instant that um, she's running, uh, that would be 0. So that just drops away. And I get then d theta dt is equal to, when that goes to 0, that's 3 plus 1 third. So that's 1 over 10 ninths. So that's 9 tenths. I think that's correct. So 0.9 radians per second would be the rate of angle rotation there. All right. I am going to leave that um, and just skip the rest of it. I think you kind of get the idea for that. But that we're going to punt on that one. This guy here. OK, so uh, we're going to try to um, come up with as much information about the, this as we can. Uh, we're going to use our calculator. Um, it doesn't say you can't, so in this case with some of the decimals we definitely will. I'll be clear about whether or not you can use your calculator. Some of these you could do sort of without to get them set up and it might be useful, but this is calculator friendly. So f prime of x is then 12x to the third minus 48x squared plus 36x. Okay. Then we're asking, well, when is this equal to 0? And I'm going to right away take out a 12x. And then it's going to be x squared minus 4x plus 3. 
which then will be uh, 12x and x minus 3 and x minus 1. So my potential uh, max min type stuff are when x is equal to 0. And I'm going to put it in the right order just because I like that when I check them out. 1 and 3. And I am looking for the critical points. Uh, it's If I had more time, I'd write it out more clearly. But critical points are going to happen when f is minus 1, f of minus 1, f of 0, f of 1, f of 3 and f of 4. We'll find those. I'm going to find the second derivative now while I've got this. f double prime of x then is equal to, that's 36x squared minus 96x plus 36. And I can take out, what, a 36? And then this is going to be 0 when I've got, no, I can't take out a 36. That would be 72. No, I can take out a 12. And I get 3x squared minus 8x plus 3. This uh, is not factorable. Unfortunately, it would work. If I think that was 10, um, but can't go back in time and rewrite it. So I'm going to do quad form. So this will be 0 when x is equal to um, positive 8 minus a minus 8 plus or minus the square root of 64 minus 4 times 9. That's 36 all over 2a, all over 6. Well, that's going to be equal to 8 plus or minus the square root of uh, 28 all over 6. And I can take this is equal to 2 radical 7. I can cancel a 2 everywhere. And this equals then 4 plus or minus uh, radical 7 over 3. All right, it would be great if that was an, I mean, we want exact answers. And that will do it. But I realize now that plugging this into the original function is a nightmare. So, wow, that's uh, apologies over that. Yeah, on a test, you could write me a hate letter on that one. Um, but let's get the calculator going. So, I think I did type this in earlier. So, and I also put in the derivative that will save us some time. And uh, the window then, it makes sense to go from about negative 3 to positive 5. Uh, I um, graphed it earlier and found this is a very good window. So let's just take a look at that. I will go, though, and turn off this equation so I don't see it because it's distracting. There is the um, fourth, degree or fourth degree polynomial, all right? And it seems to make a lot of sense. I like the fact that we can hit the trace button and then put in these values right here. So I can put in uh, negative 1 and then just hit Enter, and I get 47. And I can put in 0, and that is a no-brainer. That's going to be 10. And I can put in 1 and get 15. And I can put in 3. And that's minus 17. And then 4, I think, is the last one. That's 42. So to sketch this, that's 10. It's obviously coming down. And then it goes up. Uh, at 1, it's 15. At 3, it it's negative 17, whoops, yep. At 1 it's 15, and then at 3 it's negative 17, call it right there. And then it turns around and goes up like that.
and I'm going to stop it right there and stop it right there. So this is negative uh, 1, 47. There's 0, 10. There's 1, 15. There is 3 minus 17. And there's 4, 42. Uh, we are asked to use Newton's method to find the zero. All right, so I like that zero. We could also look for this one. Doesn't really matter. But um, that looks like it's going to be close to two. We also want to find the points of concavity here, so let's get them at least approximately. So if I quit out of that and I do four minus square root of seven, and then divide it by three, I get about four point, or point four five. So that's a little bit less than half, so that's about right there. So inflection point at x equals four uh, pl minus radical seven over two, and then when we do it, 4 plus radical 7 divided by oop, 3, I think, right? Divided by 3. About 2.2. .2. So that's right there is where it inflects. All right. And 4 plus radical 7 over 3. Like I said, you can't really plug that in and evaluate the, uh, the function value there, but we could... Uh, certainly trace and get close, but I'm going to move on because this is going to be too long. I'm going to show you Newton's method for that. So if you recall, uh, if we start with a guess that's close by, we should be good on either side of this. So we're going to start with 2. And if I go and um, up clear, if I take 2 and store that, hit the button, the store button down right there, and store that as x, hit enter and then I can do uh, because I put in the equation that's the derivative okay that's the denominator for Newton's method that's the numerator if I do uh, X and then minus remember it's minus and then I hit the vars key go over to variables I choose the function I choose one and then divide that again I hit vars go over hit enter and hit two and then don't forget, you have to store this. Once you've done it, this is the Newton method step. The next y iteration will be also repeated as x. That's our little loop. It just sends it in a loop. When I hit enter, I get that value. Then that sticks it back in for x, and I adjust it again because I get the new f of that and that. And when I get, uh, would I say, four digit decimal places, so really it's after two iterations. And so I'm going to say the zero. And it'd be great if you like wrote this down and explained it. Y1 slash Y2, store that as X loop. And that gives us a zero at um, 2.0818. All right. Uh, just to confirm super fast, if we go to the graph, and we do second calc and find a zero, option number two. And if I get to the left of that, and then go to the right of it, and hit enter. Oh my goodness, it does agree. What do you know? Calculus works. All right, way to go, Newton. Then on this last one, it's like a, a baking show. I did these at home just to save time. They're pretty straightforward. Um, I'll try to get more variety. These all turn out to be 0 over 0. Remember to pay attention. There are some that just plug them in and work. Don't get fooled by those. To check them out. Then uh, this one, when you do it, you just get the ratio A over B. This last one here, the canoe trip or whatever it is, I've drawn it out. You've got to pick some distance x along the riverbank that you aim for. Whatever that is, that first distance is going to be Pythagorean based. So the distance is the square root of 2, because you're 2 miles away, plus x squared, square rooted. 
the distance that you're left over with is simply x taken away from 8 and then you multiply each by the cost of how much it is to be transported along these two lines of, of transport and when you write that in you get this equation that the cost based on x is 40 times 4 plus x squared to the 1 half that's square rooting plus 20 times the x minus 8 I distributed that in and then I took the derivative and I got 40 over 2 times the square root of that then the derivative of the inside is the 2x part and then that's equal to well when I distribute that in I take the, uh, the derivative of negative 20x and I get negative 20 but in setting it equal to 0 I just cheated and I made it equal to 0 so I have to solve this I cross multiply I put this over 1 and then cross multiply the 20 and the 40 I guess I could have canceled even before that um, Oh, that's funny. All right, so I see a mistake here, but that's okay. We'll fix it. That's actually 2x. Hmm. All right, maybe I made a mistake here, but that's okay. I'm going to go back to this original one. This 2 and that 40 cancel to make 20, and these cancel entirely. So I'm going to redo this because that is not correct. You then get uh, 2x over the square root of 4 plus x squared and that's just equal to 1 and then when I cross multiply that's just going to go over to the other side so that's 4 plus x squared so then when I square both sides I get 4 plus x squared equals uh, 4x squared when I take away Oh, I guess I didn't. I guess I did get that correct somewhere in there. I just didn't show it. But at any rate, it's four equals three x squared when I subtract x squared from both sides. So four thirds equals x squared. So x equals the square root of four thirds, or two over radical three, or even best, x equals two radical three over three. All right. And that's approximately 1.154 miles. All right, hope that's good. Oh my goodness, that's long.